This is AutoLine Daily, the show dedicated to enthusiasts of the global automotive industry. After losing $2 billion last year, Ford is swinging an axe to cut costs, and it's especially taking aim at its European operations. It will cut 3,800 jobs over the next three years, mostly in the UK and Germany. 2,800 of those are engineering jobs, and the other 1,000 are staff personnel. It's not getting rid of all of its engineers and will keep around 3,400 of them. Ford only made $47 million in profit last year in Europe and says the cuts will revitalize its operations. And it says that these cuts won't affect its plan to offer an all-electric lineup in Europe by 2035. And while Ford is taking an ax to its European operations, it's taking advantage of the Inflation Reduction Act to invest heavily in the U.S. for EVs. To provide a little more detail to yesterday's report, Ford will invest $3.5 billion to build an LFP battery plant in Michigan that will open in 2026. Chinese battery maker CATL will license its technology to Ford, as well as supply the manufacturing equipment and the personnel to get it up and running. Ford will own and run the plant, which will employ 2,500 people. It will make 35 gigawatt hours of batteries a year, enough to power 400,000 EVs. LFP, or lithium iron phosphate batteries, don't use critical materials like cobalt or manganese, which makes them significantly cheaper than NMC, or nickel manganese cobalt batteries. The IRA provides subsidies of $35 per cell and $10 per module, which is why there is now a flurry of activity to build battery plants in the U.S. And Ford is not going to wait for that plant to open and will start importing LFP batteries from China that will go in the base model of the Mustang Mach-E this spring and in the base model of the F-150 Lightning next year. The prismatic cells will use a cell-to-pack configuration which allows more to be packed into the battery. So even though an LFP battery has a lower energy density, The pack will have the same kilowatt hour rating as an NMC pack, but at a lower cost. LFP batteries also charge faster, they tolerate more level 3 fast charging, and they can be completely discharged and charged back to 100% without significantly degrading the life of the battery. Ford will continue to offer NMC batteries for customers who want more power and longer driving range. At Schaeffler, we pioneer motion. Electrifying mobility. Manufacturing smarter. Reducing CO2 emissions. Making energy production clean. Schaeffler pioneers motion to advance how the world moves. In the future, you may be able to drive to the place you want to go, get out of your car, it goes and parks itself, and then comes back to pick you up again. BMW and the supplier Valeo are co-developing a level 4 autonomous parking system that allows a car to park itself. Users have to pull into a drop-off zone, get out, tap a few buttons on an app, and the vehicle slowly takes off for the nearest available space. They also say fully automated charging and car washes could be added to the service as a benefit to users. Depending on the parking situation, either the car will handle the parking or it will work with embedded technology on site. And the system is being developed so that other automakers can join as well. However, they give no timetable for its launch. And if this sounds familiar, we've reported on a similar setup Mercedes is developing with Bosch. Porsche officially started making e-fuels at a plant in Chile. The site uses wind turbines to generate electricity, which is used to produce hydrogen through electrolysis, as well as devices to capture CO2 from ambient air. That hydrogen and CO2 are then combined to create e-methanol, which is then converted to gas and then refined again so it can be used in cars. The first batch of e-fuel was filled into a 911 and drifted around roadways at the facility. Initially, the site will make 130,000 liters 
or a little over 34,300 gallons a year, which will mostly be used in the Porsche Super Cup racing series. By 2026, it will make 55 million liters or 14.5 million gallons of e-fuel, and then by 2028, it will be able to produce 10 times that amount. If e-fuels can be made at the same cost of gasoline, it could be a real threat to EVs since the vehicles would likely have a similar carbon footprint. But we've heard that e-fuels currently take three times the energy to make and cost three times as much as gasoline. Look, Godzilla! Nah, we're not talking about a giant lizard. We're talking about a giant robot. Tesla released a series of videos on its Twitter account showing vehicle production at its Gigafactory in Berlin. It takes you through the process of making a Model Y, which starts out in the body shop, stamping out 13 body panels. Then it moves to the front and rear castings, which are married with the body, and at the end of this line is where a giant robot named Godzilla lifts entire cars into the paint shop. Finally, after paint, the vehicles move to General Assembly, where 1,000 plus people are working on any given shift. We want to know what drives your testing. OTA, connected car, diagnostics, remote testing, Intrepid Control Systems is here to help you work from anywhere. Intrepid Control Systems, driven by your data. Tesla pioneered big display screens in cars. Everyone copied Tesla, and now it's hard to find a car without one. Even more, they keep getting bigger. According to S&P Global Mobility, about a quarter of vehicles in the U.S. have display screens that are 11 inches or larger. By 2027, one out of three vehicles will have a screen that big, and electric vehicles are leading the way. For example, in 2021, the ICE version of the Mustang came with a 4.2-inch display, while the electric Mach-E features a 15.5-inch screen. But not everyone is happy about big display screens. Safety experts say they can be too distracting, and not all owners are crazy about them. Consumer Reports says its surveys show the larger, flashier screens rank near the bottom in satisfaction, while smaller, simpler systems rank much higher. For the ninth consecutive year, Toyota racked up more patents than any other automaker from the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office. The company was awarded 3,056 patents last year, and nearly half were related to future mobility. Overall, Toyota ranked number four on the list, which is its highest ranking in the list's 40-year history. Samsung, IBM, and LG placed ahead of Toyota. And Toyota says it spends more than a million dollars per hour on R&D. Fascinating figure. Autonomous vehicles may be arriving later than expected, but they are slowly getting here. Zooks, which is owned by Amazon, is now shuttling employees between two of its buildings in California that are a mile apart, and its goal is to get approval to open its services to the public. Zooks designed its own purpose-built vehicle, which seats four passengers who face each other, and it can run up to 35 miles an hour, or 56 kilometers an hour. The vehicle is similar to the Cruise Origin, and now the race is on between Zooks and GM Cruise, to see who will be the first to get paying customers riding in their purpose-built AV shuttles. And GM CEO Mary Barra set a goal for Cruise to be generating a billion dollars in revenue a year by 2025. And that brings us to the end of today's show. Thanks for making AutoLine a part of your day. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, solutions for your journey. Intrepid Control Systems, over-the-air engineering, boost your game. And by Scheffler, we pioneer motion.